Good evening. My name is Mrs. Maxwell. I was just getting myself ready for bed. I've had my cup of sleepy time tea. I've brushed my teeth. I got my jammies on and I got my special teddy ready. And then I thought I'll snuggle down with a really nice bedtime story. Would you like to join me? Super. So this story is called Jack's Fantastic Voyage and it's by Michael Foreman. Here we go. You'll find out why I like this book so much. Jack's mother and father both worked in the city. So Jack spent his holidays with his grandfather, a sea captain, in his old house by the sea. Jack loved it there. The house was very old and made of wood. It looked like a beach boat. A strong wind could send sea spray full of salt and sand flying over the roof into the narrow streets behind. Yet it was the inside of the house that held the most wonders for Jack. His grandfather had painted pictures everywhere. When he had grown too old to sail the seas, he painted his memories. The beams of the ceiling were carved and hung with wooden birds and floor birds were carved with fishes. All around the sides of grandfather's big bed were scenes of wild seas and shipwrecks. On the panel above the pillows was an ocean of icebergs and at the foot of the bed was mounted a great ship's wheel. During the day, Jack often played with his friends on the beach, but it was in the evenings that Jack loved the best. That was when grandfather told him the stories behind the pictures. Starting out as a young ship's boy, Jack's grandfather had lived a life of adventure. He seemed to have sailed every sea and visited every port. Jack loved his descriptions of tropical islands, the air thick with scents, spices and parrots. In his imagination, he saw great whales spouting and dolphins and flying fishes around grandfather's ship. Most of all, Jack looked forward to the stormy nights because then grandfather told his terrifying tales of typhoon and shipwreck. But one day, while playing with his friends, Jack heard some of them laughing about his grandfather. Look out, Jack, here comes your crazy granddad. He's not crazy. I love him, said Jack. He's bonkers. He paints mad pictures and he makes up stories. He doesn't make them up, cried Jack. Of course he does. He's never been to sea. You ask anyone, shouted one of the boys. And they all ran off as Grandfather approached. Had a good time, Jack? asked Grandfather, smiling. Jack hoped that Grandfather had not heard what the boys had been saying. That evening, when Grandfather told Jack another story of the sea, he made it sound so real that he felt sure that Grandfather could not be making it up. Next door to Grandfather's house was a tiny bookshop. The owners were Grandfather's closest friends and sometimes they looked after him when he was ill. They often took him bowls of hot soup, but if the bowls were left there too long, Grandfather painted ships all over them. Surely, thought Jack, they will know the truth about my Grandfather. The next morning, Jack went to the bookshop. Well, Jack, said Mr. Anderson, the bookshop owner, your grandfather hasn't been to sea since we've known him, but he is the oldest person in the village. Maybe he had all his adventures before we met him. Jack just didn't know what to think. The next day, Jack didn't go to the beach with the other boys, but he spent the day on the rocks close to grandfather's house. Grandfather knew something was troubling him. And that evening, he cooked him his favorite supper of fresh brill and crinkly chips. When the dishes were washed and stowed away, Grandfather tucked Jack up in the big bed and began another tale. It was a tale to match the night, a tale of storm and danger among icebergs of frozen seas. The wind was buffeting the shutters and waves full of stones rattled on the roof. The house shook. Grandfather moved the dishes from the shelves to the cupboards underneath but still continued on with the story. The ship's boy was now at the wheel, trying to hold her into the wind. He turned to Jack. Take the wheel, Jack. Half asleep, Jack crawled to the ship's wheel at the foot of the bed. It was a dark and stormy night, continued Grandfather. It took all the boy's strength to keep the wheel steady. Hold her steady, Jack, he shouted over the storm. Jack could feel the house shaking, swaying from side to side. Books fell from the shelves and a chair slid across the floor. The storm shutters were now off the windows. 
Jack could see the light from the distant lighthouse. It seemed to be bouncing in the dark. The house was afloat. Grandfather raced downstairs to the kitchen. Jack heard him shoveling coal into the big black cooking range. We need more steam, he cried. Keep her steady, Jack, to the left of the light. They were beyond the harbor, pitching over the white-topped waves. As they neared the lighthouse, a thick blanket of fog rolled over them, and the only mournful sound was the lighthouse foghorn, which told Jack where to steer. It was a comforting sound and reminded him of Grandfather's snoring. Under the fog, the sea was not so rough. Jack began to feel at ease with the wheel. He got used to the shift and the sway. Grandfather was now on the balcony outside the front window, peering into the mist. Sometimes, without turning around, he raised his arm and pointed left or right, and Jack changed course. Then the fog thinned and was gone. Instead of black rolling waves, there was a white sea of ice and a sky full of stars. They sailed slowly through a zigzag channel in the ice until they, enter until they entered an ocean of blue and green water dotted with huge icebergs. And there they were, all the ships from grandfather's paintings, the great clippers with their white sails, fast cutters and schooners, brown sailed smacks and luggers, and even the grimy collier from the coal bucket. For hours they sailed among this magic fleet and around every iceberg. Seals were chased by polar bears, whales and narwhals rose and fell in the clear water. Then the ice began to close over the sea and the ships were gone. They sailed back through the zigzag channel and it shut behind them. The blanket of fog covered everything once more. When Jack woke up, the pale sun was just appearing over the horizon. He dressed and went out onto the balcony. Everything seemed normal. The house was high and dry amongst its neighbors. Had it all been just a dream? He went to find Grandfather and tell him all about it. Jack found him at the back of the house. He could hardly believe his eyes. There was Grandfather standing on a chair, chipping the last telltale icicle off of the roof. And that was Jack's fantastic voyage. Good night.